Okay, verses 19 through 23. Uh, Verse 19, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus uh, uh, was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, He withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, that he would be called a Nazarene. So after Herod died, Herod died in 4 AD, all right? So Jesus was in Egypt at least two years, possibly up to three years. He was, you know, it wasn't just a, uh, he wasn't just gone for a couple of weeks, right? Um. The Jewish historian Josephus described Herod's death. This is what he said. Herod died of this, ulcerated entrails, putrefied and maggot-filled organs, constant convulsions, foul breath, and neither physicians nor warm baths led to recovery. But when Herod was dead, the threat was over. And so the angel of the Lord appeared again to Joseph in a dream and told him to return home. And it says, again, as soon as he woke up, he made preparations to do what the angel told him to do, to return to Israel. But it says that Joseph did not return to Bethlehem or to the area of Judea because of Herod's son, Archelaus, who was now king of Judea. He'd taken his father's place. Now, Herod had put a Roman eagle over the temple gate. Okay. Um, it's kind of like, okay, one of, one of the great symbols of America is the eagle, right? Okay. So one of the great symbols of the Roman Empire was also the eagle. And Herod, Herod had uh, added on so much to the temple And Herod, as we talked last week, had done all of these building projects and spent so much money and effort in serving the Jewish people and expanding the city and expanding the temple and beautifying the temple. And he was a Roman king and the Jews were under Roman occupation. And so he thought it was perfectly appropriate. There should be a Roman eagle over the gate entering into the temple. But of course... The Jews thought that was blasphemy. The Jews thought that was desecrating the temple and they hated it. And there were two priests, two Jewish priests. uh, I've got their names in here, Judas and Matthias. These two priests eventually stirred up enough of the Jewish people to revolt and tear down the eagle. So they tore down the eagle. And shortly before Herod died, Herod had those two priests executed. Well, as you can imagine, that wouldn't go over too well. (laughs) And so in the meantime, Herod had passed away. And at the following Passover, there was a huge insurrection by the Jewish people against the Roman occupation. And by this time, Archelaus was the king. And Archelaus decided that he would crush this uprising and he had 3,000 prominent Jews killed. A lot of them were Jews who had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And so Joseph, Joseph hears, (laughs) you know, it's like the angel says, hey, don't worry, go back. Herod's dead. And uh, Joseph hears, yeah, but Archelaus is still there. You know, Archelaus isn't much better. And so he he decides that he will go uh, not and settle in the south, not around Jerusalem and Bethlehem and so forth. But he's going to go back to his hometown. And the Bible indicates that both Mary and Joseph were from Nazareth. And so they go to Nazareth in the north. Now, Matthew says here that the prophets said that Jesus would be called a Nazarene. We don't have any of those statements recorded for us. That doesn't mean the prophets didn't say it. That doesn't mean that that wasn't passed down and handed down, but it just means that we don't have those recorded for us. But apparently, Matthew, in writing to the Jews, 
They were familiar with that. And so Matthew says, kind of, remember, this is what the prophet said. The people said, you're right. That's what the prophet said, even though we don't have it on paper. Nazareth was about 55 miles north of Jerusalem. It was located in the mountains, halfway between the Sea of Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea. The town was in an elevated basin, about a, uh, one and a half miles across. And Nazareth was known for being a small, rough, crude, tough little town. That's why Nathaniel, who was from Cana, just a few miles south of uh, Nazareth, he asked Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? So some have pointed to Jesus' hometown being Nazareth as a reason to disbelieve that he was the Messiah. But Matthew says it is proof that Jesus is the Messiah. Why do you think it's significant that Jesus came from Nazareth, a town like Nazareth? I forget what the song is, but it talks about that, that he, he, Jesus wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth, right? He, he didn't come from the upper echelons of society. He didn't come from a background with, of money. Jesus came from a very humble beginning. Yeah, very humble beginning. He was just... I mean, obviously he was deity. Obviously he was the Christ. But I mean, he was just a guy. He was just a guy, except for that, except for being Christ, right? But he just he just came from a, a, a typical family. His dad was a carpenter, right? Small little dusty town of Nazareth. Didn't dress to the hilt, okay? I mean, he, he was brilliant, obviously, he educated the rabbis, right? But he himself, he himself didn't have a formal education. He, he was just a guy. And so he came to reach people like me, <laughs> people like you. 